In this video, we will talk about the Pygmalion effect in the classroom. The Pygmalion effect refers to the phenomenon whereby one's positive expectations of another can come to serve as a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, in the Pygmalion effect, what we expect of another is more likely to occur because we are inclined to act in ways that make the expected outcome to occur. As Robert Rosenthal and Elisha Babad write, when we expect certain behaviors of others, we are likely to act in ways that make the expected behavior more likely to occur. Historically, the Pygmalion effect has its origin in ancient Greek mythology. In fact, the Pygmalion effect is named after the Greek myth of Pygmalion. According to this myth, which was narrated in Book 10 of Ovid's Metamorphosis, Pygmalion was a sculptor who fell in love with an ivory statue of his own making. Enamored by the beauty of the statue, Pygmalion then begged the gods to give him a wife in the likeness of the statue. And according to the story, the gods granted Pygmalion's request, resulting in the coming into life of the ivory statue. The most famous application of the Pygmalion effect in the classroom, that is, in education, was the experiment conducted by Robert Rosenthal and Lenore Jacobson in a single California elementary school in the 1950s. In the experiment, Rosenthal and Jacobson gave all students a disguised IQ test at the beginning of the study with the intention of not disclosing the scores to the teachers. Rosenthal and Jacobson then told the teachers that based on the results of the experiment, certain children, which is about 20% of the school chosen randomly, are intellectual bloomers and are expected to show great improvement in their intellectual competence, far better than any other students within a year. Then, Rosenthal and Jacobson randomly selected the supposed intellectual bloomers, who differed only in terms of the expectations that teachers were told to have for them, and disclosed their names to the teachers. By the end of the school year, all students were given again an IQ test with the same questionnaire used at the beginning of the study. And interestingly, the supposed intellectual bloomers had gained significantly in intellectual achievement compared to the control group. Indeed, the supposed intellectual bloomers performed way better than the control group. And again, this self-fulfilling prophecy has been called the Pygmalion effect. In later years, Several important studies have been conducted to corroborate Rosenthal and Jacobson's findings. For example, in 1992, Lee Jossam and Jacqueline Eccles published their seminal work titled Teacher Expectations II, Construction and Reflection of Student Achievement. In this study, Jossam and Eccles examined the effect of mathematics teachers' expectancies on the achievement of their 6th grade students. And in line with the Pygmalion effect or self-fulfilling prophecy hypothesis, the teachers' expectations and the students' academic performance indeed caused positive changes in the performance of the 6th grade students in mathematics. Now, you might wonder how the Pygmalion effect really works, and what mechanisms account for the teacher's expectancy effect. Well, Elena Friedrich, Barbara Flunger, Benjamin Nagengast, and Catherine Junkman, in their work titled Pygmalion Effects in the Classroom, 
teacher expectancy effects and students' math achievement, narrated the following. Teachers form differential expectancies for their students. And then, teachers' beliefs about those students begin to lead to different treatment, such as providing more attention and support, or climate, offering more challenging learning materials, or input, interacting more often and longer, or output, and being more responsive to the work or provide feedback of the students for whom they hold high expectations. Students in turn recognize the teacher's high expectancies and react to them. They may work more and harder and develop higher motivation and interest in schoolwork. Now, this more engaged student behavior will, in the long run, improve their academic achievement, and those changes may also affect students' self-concept and motivation. Now, the teacher recognizes the positive changes in the student's behavior feel supported in his or her former expectancies, and the self-fulfilling cycle is complete and reinforced. These points of the self-fulfilling prophecy, or the Pygmalion effect, can simply be illustrated by this diagram. Our beliefs about ourselves influence our actions toward others, and these actions impact others' beliefs about us, which cause others' action toward us, and eventually reinforce our beliefs about ourselves. And the cycle goes on and on. The results of the experiment of Rosenthal and Jacobson show that teachers' expectations indeed influenced students' performance. Hence, some of the important implications of the Pygmalion effect in education is that if teachers gripe about students, then they create a climate of failure. However, if the teachers value their students' abilities and constantly encourage them, then they create a climate of success. That's it for now. Thanks for visiting us today for another whiteboard discussion here at Philo Notes. Full transcript of this video is available at philonotes.com. And to keep you updated of our newest videos, simply click here and subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Thanks! Take care!